I We're, think you're feeling I'm good. I'm in the studio, <laughs> uh, trying to recover from you know a very late night art walk last night. But we got a chance to hang out at Catherine Thinner's uh, studio and gallery, which is this huge space on Capitol Hill in Seattle. She's a very successful artist, and uh, so it was great to see her space and be able to kind of absorb all of her creativity. That was really cool. And that guitar lick that goes out to Ken Thale, who is our local sound garden guitarist who is now um, on Mastodon's new um, release so he's kind of taken over uh, or at least been a guest on there on that doom rock band that everybody's talking about these days in Seattle so shout out to him and then I'm getting ready for the International Symposium on Journalism the ISOJ 2022 which is going to be great there's always these series of really interesting journalism conferences. And of course now uh, most of them are happening online. Some have some partial participation in person. There are some sessions at the University of Texas at Austin uh, for the ISOJ. That's part of, uh, there's some really great groups like uh, uh, the Brennan Foundation and the Reuters Foundation and other groups that are uh, sponsoring these international symposiums and webinars and conferences on journalism. And so yours truly usually participates as executive director for Democracy Watch News. And it's a great opportunity to kind of pick the brains of some pretty high level journalists around the world and also just figure out what's going on in this country in terms of press freedom and what's going on around the world because a lot of reporters are really under duress right now. And and suffering under authority. Well, you know, it's things. funny you mention that because I'm watching BBC News and uh, they get a woman, uh, I think her name is uh, Lisette, um, who is uh, there on the uh, rooftops of Ukraine and watching BBC, which is, uh, you know, really, if you think about it, uh, maybe the best journalism, at least on television and on radio, too, of course. Uh, and that's... You know, that's what I think we we all should be aiming for. Uh, and they've been doing a, a fantastic job. And I must say, I, I, we've given credit to CNN International, which, of course, is uh, CNN America, is using a lot of their international folks, people like uh, Chance and so forth. You're right. And, and, and this is this is this thing that we need to really uh, hone in on, is that, you know, these reporters are risking their lives. I mean, obviously, you're getting... You know, shot at airstrikes uh, by the Russians, and there are things going back and forth between Ukraine and Russia. You can get stuck in the middle of that. So it's a uh, it's a big big deal, and, and and it's something I know you talk a lot about, and how the United States get, has to be better when it comes to um, you know reporters without borders and stuff. So it's it's really important, uh, and good on you for bringing all this up, uh, Mr. Mark. I would like to mention the Knight Foundation too. They do a really great job, and they're they're the ones that are behind the ISOJ and kind of helping sponsor stuff at the University of Texas at Austin. But great groups of people. Some of them, you know, most of them are, are nonprofits and are supported by grants and foundations and um, just, you know, people who support them. So the Committee to Protect Journalists, the uh, Reporters Committee for Freedom of the Press, another great group in the United States, they all offer legal assistance and training and all sorts of um, resources to journalists around the country and around the world on these kinds of issues. And, yeah, I mean, uh, we are ranked 44th in the world in terms of press freedom here in the United States. We, there was a lot of talk last night during this art party, actually, uh, after the uh, the official art walk happened last night, by the way. My friend Terrence, Terrence Winder had his first photographs ever shown in a gallery, so we were really excited and glad to be there to support him. Also, Jeff Mahayu, it's just world-renowned uh, uh, artist here, but we talked a lot about journalism, and people were very concerned about, uh, one, the authenticity of journalism because of the corporate media monopolies, and that, so that you know, was a major concern. And then also, yeah, just the uh, personal um, uh, protection and health and welfare of journalists around the world right now. It's, it's like it's not an easy time to be a journalist, so my heart goes out to people in war zones and places where, you know, you know, they're seeing things, and I have too, you know, that might give them, you know, some um, bad memories, but uh, they're doing it for a good cause. They want the world to know what's happening. And a lot of the journalists I work with, luckily, are in it for the right reasons and actually want to try to help change the world. So they're hoping that they're, you know, by getting the information out there, it might help bring about some kind of change. So if you have that kind of drive, 
Right. As a well, I mean, I think that that's 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 kind of you know how I think you and I are built in in terms of trying to do the right thing. Uh, you know, it's not about profit. You know, everybody wants to live comfortably and understandably, uh, and everybody should. Uh, but it it is about trying to do the right thing, and 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 that's what I think is really important, and it's be able to have that uh, opportunity. Uh, let me let me ask you because I was really disheartened to hear uh, and read your notes about uh, your mayor Harold destroying some of these homeless uh, areas. Um, this this to me is is really really sad, and I want to take a call from from John in Minneapolis in a second uh, because uh, they've had some issues up there too. I, I'm I'm concerned that you know this progressive city. We talk about it all the time. How you got, how you guys lead on minimum wage and marijuana legalization and all. All these things that you know put you at the top of the of the of the poll, you know, of being progressive. But this this to me is is really problematic. Give us a little background here. Um, on I, I know that a lot of mayors say, well, we can get them into better homes and and so on and so forth. But most of the time, they can't. Uh, and particularly with the high value of rent in your city, thanks to the Amazons and and uh, Microsofts and company. You know, that's that's what, you know, unfortunately, it's not reality. What's the latest there, man? That's def- definitely been true in the United States and in Seattle in particular, where you have major corporations building these billion-dollar housing, or excuse me, headquarters developments, which has wiped out a lot of affordable housing, made the cost of real estate go through the roof, which means, you know, in a city where there's no rent control, landlords can pretty much uh, charge whatever they want. There are re- a reportedly... 100,000 people behind on their rent in Seattle right now because they weren't able to keep their uh, income up during the pandemic. So, you know, some serious economic issues have led to widespread uh, and homeless encampments around the city. So the latest news on that, Jeff, is that city workers clear homeless camp outside of Seattle City Hall. So now Bruce Harrell, he, uh, our new mayor, had a uh, meeting with local, regional, and federal law enforcement about uh, crime, but as part of his sort of clean up the city's crime initiative, you know, he's kind of do, doing the Giuliani here, and all of a sudden now it's also sweep up all the homeless encampments. Um, and, you know, he almost talks about it like it's a uh, like window dressing, like, you know, well, we just, you know, we don't want any of the sidewalks partially blocked by tents. And, you know, as far as I know, there's nowhere in the city where you can't walk down the sidewalk because of tents. They're usually off to the side in some empty lot or something. But, it, but whatever, you know, he's. He wants shoppers to shop, you know, and he wants uh, the business to boom because he is a business kind of supported guy. His candidacy was largely funded by large businesses, including some former Trump supporters and donors. But um, he, in general, is, would be considered a Democrat and more liberal to, uh, and has leaned on the progressive I- issues, especially when it came to r- racism in the Seattle Police Department and other important civil rights issues. Now people are wondering, are Is he just going to join the bandwagon? It looks like he and the Republican city attorney, um, first time in many years. So we used to have a city attorney here named Mark Sidron that people referred to as Darth Sidron because he was a very (laughs) sort of dark figure in the community. And he was a Mr. Law and Order. Let's sweep up the homeless encampments. Let's throw everybody in jail. Let's, you know, push poor people out of the community. Well, now we have a new Republican uh, city attorney. And Ann Davison is a, was a former Trump supporter. Now you ask yourself, how can somebody like that get elected in Seattle? It's because uh, in the primary, our, uh, our incumbent city attorney, Pete Holm, who was who a kind of a model for reform-minded uh, city attorneys around the country. And as I, I always told the story, you know, like he always showed off his trophy to me that he got from Hemp Fest, which is a cannabis festival here in Seattle, because he's always always supported legalization of marijuana but he got voted out in the primaries and the person who beat him was uh branded by the corporate media as being incredibly left-wing and radical and she did have a lot of you know very negative things to say about the police department especially after a year where there were what 19,000 complaints filed against the police department in seattle uh, mostly during protests and you know they just paid a three and a half million dollar uh, wrongful death suit in the death of uh, Charlena Lyles here. Um, so big issue, you know, a black, pregnant black woman, just a horrible, tragic episode where they shot her in her own home after she called the police about a, a reported burglary. So it was just crazy. 
They said well, they left is. their taser. And, 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 this is really hard. Oh, oh yeah. Th- actually, yeah. The crocodile reopened in Seattle, by the way. Um, I should mention that uh, it closed for a while during the pandemic, but one of Seattle's iconic rock clubs reopened in a new location just a few blocks away. And if you guys want to check out my music, go to YouTube. And if you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And have a great weekend, Jeff. You guys rock. As um, basketball and hockey seasons come to an end soon, and uh, baseball, of course, will kind of take over as uh, we get into um, you know June, July.